budget. What does that even mean nowadays? A lot of people say you get what you pay for, and while that is true and I occasionally stand behind that thought, I do think as consumers, every single dollar we spend matters. Especially for gamers since most of us tend to game within our school years. You see, I just got what most of us consider a budget laptop, like this comes in at $1,099. And I'd say the range for budget is anywhere between $800 to $1,200, depending on the specs and the quality, of course. But you know what? Sometimes these gaming laptops have major drawbacks and they are not perfect. So to make sure you guys are getting your money's worth, I'm going to show you what to look for on a gaming laptop by reviewing the latest budget gaming laptop from MSI the Cyborg 15. Yo, John, just a few more angles and, and we're good to go. Slow, slow. And okay, I'm done. Okay, sounds good. Just give me two seconds. Yo, bro, I'm excited to see what a budget laptop can do. Really intrigued. Okay, bro, I'm logging in. This is some BS. Bro, did you did you see this? Bro, they're gonna ban me? Me, bro? 2024, bro. Yo, you good? Thank you for me, bro. This this cannot happen, bro, John. Aren't you like level five? It's not a big deal. That's not the point. That... That's not the point. I'm Valo God. Hey, they're gonna hear from me. You should tell them. Go tell them. Go 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 go, go tell them. That was sick. All right, this is gonna be sick. Is this a cyborg? Yes, okay. 15 inch cyborg, yeah. There's honestly nothing like getting a new laptop. I'm telling you guys, it is so satisfying. I wanna see the packaging for these new laptops, to be honest. See, this is different. This is what I'm talking about, especially on the budget side. And now I pray that they don't have these massive charging bricks anymore. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this seems small. I am hoping it's small. Cable. Okay, that is not bad. Don't get me wrong, it's still big, but it's not huge. Let's take this out. Stickers and then just the manual right here. And a bunch of just emptiness. There's literally nothing in here. And of course, a laptop like this deserves a nice little reveal. Beautiful. Exactly what I was waiting for. Yo, there's no chance I'm the only one with this laptop that thought MSI misspelled gaming, like gaming with an N. There's clearly a G, but honestly, at first I was like, there's no way. Anyways, I found that hilarious. Let's talk about design. First things first, visually, the laptop has to appeal to you. For example, back when I was at CES, the Cyborg was the one that appealed to me the most. Why? Because it's relatively slim for a gaming laptop. I love the translucent accents it has, and it doesn't feel cheap. Like, if we open this up, you'll notice there's little flex on the laptop. The budget gaming laptops honestly are getting so good when it comes to the flex. Like, in the middle of the keyboard, there's very little flex. Trackpad, very little. And here in the sides, it's like super sturdy. Pretty crazy. You want to make sure your laptop is also not heavy. 4.3 pounds is relatively impressive for a gaming laptop, especially if you are a student. Hinges, check those. MSI laptops generally have a very bad reputation with hinges. I wonder how this design will age on their end, but you always want to make sure the hinges feel sturdy. It's hard to predict with time some laptops will age, but this one feels nice. Plus, with some laptops, you can push the screen all the way to the back if you have the need to share the screen for someone across from you. If you've noticed on this laptop, they did integrate aluminum in some parts of the chassis. The rest sits on this translucent plastic, probably because it saves weight. And also, for the love of God, buy from a manufacturer that lets you upgrade certain things. And, and, buy from a brand that will still keep the factory warranty even if you break the factory seal. Yo, I swear, I don't know if you guys have ever opened a laptop. Oh my god, what a struggle. This is what scares me the most. I'm breaking something. Oh my god, yeah, okay. 
this is what most gaming laptops look like. Bruv, correction, gaming budget laptops. Except for maybe something like the single fan, I mean, that's sort of a killer. Usually you want to have a couple of fans, a good amount of thermal piping, and of course, proper components. Like, look, on this laptop, their minimal piping design is somewhat shared between the CPU and the GPU, and the single fan design probably means that the CPU and GPU relatively dissipate little heat. I mean, with a 53.5 watt hour battery, which some might say is not enough, a 12th gen i7H CPU, and a 45 watt RTX 4060, which again, some might say it really isn't ideal, a single fan should theoretically be okay. For something like this that has low power draw components, thermals should be more than enough. The second most important aspect of a gaming laptop is its upgradability. Like this one lets you upgrade your SSD, your DDR5 RAM modules, and of course the Wi-Fi card just in case. Some laptops might offer memory module from brands like Samsung, which is very decent, and other brands might offer more slots for RAM and storage, but don't let spec sheets, components, and internals fool you. I swear benchmark and all of that stuff never really tell the full story of a device. It's all about bringing it into your lifestyle and your everyday life to see how things behave. Jesus, I really need a shave and a haircut. I mean, I know this is a gaming laptop, but I think at best any gaming laptop should at least have one 3.2 Gen 1 USB-C port, two 3.2 Gen 1 USB-A ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, which is a must for a gaming laptop, along with an Ethernet port. Oh, yes, and of course, a headphone jack. That to me is like the bare minimum, like give us quality ports, I'm fine with that, but at least at this bare minimum. As you start asking for a mini display port, Thunderbolt 4 port support, an extra USB-C, price tends to go up or the manufacturer tends to sacrifice elsewhere. At least MSI didn't sacrifice our HDMI port, I mean, I can still get high refresh rates on esports games. Wi-Fi 6E is not a must, it's nice, but not a must, I think Wi-Fi 6 like in this laptop is totally fine. Bluetooth on the other hand, for all you gaming brands out there that make gaming laptops, don't be like Apple and be giving us Bluetooth 5.0 like they did on their M1 Pro. Like at least a bare minimum, give us Bluetooth 5.2. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, take a look at the differences between the different Bluetooth versions. Okay, enough, we get it. This has Bluetooth 5.2. Let's move on to the good stuff. And the good stuff generally starts with keyboards and trackpads. For the money, brands like MSI always tend to make the best keyboards on gaming laptops. This is my own personal opinion. From experience, they feel nice, have enough travel to them, don't feel clunky. These are things you want to check out for. On 15 inch laptops like this one, I mean a numpad is not a must but it can be a good thing to have. I know some mod menus on GTA tend to use the numpads a lot. Um, not that I've ever used mod menus. A good backlight is generally good, although it can consume battery, especially when it's RGB which drives me nuts sometimes so seeing that this one for example is one single blue color is nice. Plus, you of course always want to make sure you can change the brightness as well as turn it off, but that's just a standard nowadays. The rest all depends on the brand. For example, MSI likes having a kill switch for the webcams and maybe even modifying the texture and design of some of their keycaps. They do tend to make super small trackpad at times, which drives me bonkers, but they do feel nice since these tend to be class touchpads. Overall, just always make sure trackpads are big enough and feel good. Amazon just delivered my display calibration tool that I'm gonna go get right now so we can measure proper units for the display. 380 bucks. This is what I need. You honestly don't need to get this. No, like really don't get this. I do this for a living. So more and more I find myself trying to collect my own data instead of reading from spec sheets. Look, generally, if you're going to game, most people care about having a nice display. The cyborg, for example, physically is appealing. You know, we have the nice minimal bezels with this sort of cool design at the top. I thought the chunky top part would allow them to integrate a 1080p camera, but I guess not. It is a panel that encloses a screen that delivers 144Hz at 1080p. Now, you might be wondering, Andres, why did you get that $380 device? Well, 
to measure contrast ratios, peak nits, and color gamuts. Stay with me, I don't want to lose you. All this literally means screen quality, things you want to look out for. For example, on this budget model, we get peak nits of 257 when uncalibrated. Generally, you want to at least get 300 nits. Contrast ratios of 1100 to 1, which is actually really good, and 65% sRGB, 49% Adobe RGB, and 49% P3. It's okay, but for a good gaming display, the level entry should at least be 100% sRGB in my opinion. I also think that a 1440p screen would have been a great addition at $1,100. This here is a super budgety display. But backlight bleed test passed like a charm and ghosting at this price really isn't that bad. Ghosting is literally when a super duper fast moving object leaves a trail behind and you can see it as it moves across the screen. It's mostly noticeable in FPS games. I think a good starting point for a budget display would be the Delta 15 from MSI. It has good specs, although the same speakers. Not that it's bad. Actually, they are decent for the price considering these are budget laptops. 2 to watt speakers is pretty standard. I think having Nahimika as the audio driver to optimize your audio experience really helps. It's probably something you might want to consider. Unless you game with headphones like any other regular gamer human being. When it comes to software, generally gaming laptop manufacturers have their own thing going on. Like MSI, it's MSI Center. Asus, it's Armory Crate. Sometimes these type of softwares allow you to control fan speeds and thermals, while others allow you to control drivers and RGB stuff. There are quite a few little gimmicks that most gaming laptop manufacturers offer. It's something I guess worth watching out for, especially when you have a brand like MSI that usually enjoys collabing with Steel Series to modify your RGB colors. Not on this laptop though. Yo, I swear I think I spent like three hours the other day trying to install all the softwares to be able to showcase what really matters when it comes to GPU and CPU. I'll leave a list down below if any of it interests you, but essentially I'm about to tell you what to look for when it comes to the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, storage on a gaming laptop. Look, I think at best for the foreseeable future, you either go AMD Ryzen 7 or Intel i7 in terms of CPU. And I say this because I want your budget gaming laptop to last you for as long as it can, but you know what's interesting? I'm running what I would say a very entry level i7 budget processor, the 12650H 12th gen CPU. And it performs great in games because of its 6 performance cores and the amount of cache it has. Now, on paper, especially when you simply run a tool like Cinebench to stress test this, it really doesn't seem like this budget CPU can do much. But don't let a spec sheet fool you when it comes to choosing budget components. There are a few things I did and you can do too to inquire more about your components. For example, I ran Cinebench with a tool called Process Lasso to prioritize Cinebench as the only software running. I also used WH Info on my 10 minute single core and multi core test to inquire more about the CPU's performance. And to my surprise, even though this is a 45 watt TDP CPU being cooled by a single fan, I saw average clock speeds of like 3.4 GHz for P cores and 2.2 GHz for E cores all while delivering average temperatures of around like 80 degrees as a whole, like throughout the whole 10 minutes even though it would clock itself higher at first, we got stable package power of like 55 watts, way better than expected for a budget CPU. And I know Intel has locked down the undervolting potential for H parts, but you can load a tool like Intel X2U for a boost in performance and increase the turbo boost power max to like 81 and the turbo boost power time window to 128 seconds. You'll see that eventually it'll thermal throttle on a benchmarking tool like Cinebench and will go back down to its regular power outage. But for a good amount of time, it'll deliver that nice steady 77 watts of power. I know there's a lot of jargon, but these are things that when people shop around for a gaming laptop, they don't really take into account. By the way, just to make sure we're all on the same page, make sure your gaming laptop has a dedicated GPU. For example, this 45 watt RTX 4060 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. Everyone hates on low power outage graphics cards, but they aren't all bad. I ran Cyberpunk with ultra graphics and ray tracing, and we were getting a good gaming experience. Fairly stable with good frames per second, great CPU power output, as well as a stable CPU and GPU temperatures. With these specs, there wasn't really a single second where I was disappointed at the performance it delivered. Of course, if you run games with different thermal presets like balance or extreme performance, 
things will vary. Especially with the fan, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but oh boy, is it loud. Generally, gaming laptops do tend to get loud and hot because they want to keep things as cool as they can while gaming, even on a low wattage graphics card like the 4060 45 watt chip. I was actually impressed at the fact that at such a low wattage, it's able to run all of these AAA games with no issues. It very much reminds me of the Steam Deck, which is another great alternative for budget gaming. And I say all these AAA games because I also ran Hogwarts Legacy with the same settings and while this is a bit more of a demanding title, stuttering will happen if you decide to go for laptops with 8GB of RAM. I think it's important to note that 16GB is a must if you want to minimize that, especially if you plan on playing AAA games. And I'd like to point out that the more VRAM, the better, especially if you want to play games on a larger monitor or a 4K display. But like if you play Valorant and CSGO, it really doesn't matter all that much. Most FPS games aren't that memory hungry, except for maybe games like Warzone and Call of Duty. On the Cyborg, because at this price you get two 16GB modules of DDR5 at 4800MHz, speeds will be more than just fine. Just take this as your baseline when it comes to memory. So as a whole, honestly, just try to stick with a level entry AMD Ryzen 7 or an Intel i7 just like this one. When it comes to the GPU, a 4060 will do the job, don't get me wrong, but maybe try to look elsewhere in the used market and get a 3060 or something like that. Just know that please get 16 gigabytes of RAM to very much future-proof yourself. It'll make it easier to play AAA games. Yo, I swear there's no way around. I literally just saw the battery life drop from 89 to 88 and it's gonna drop to 87 in no time. I know I'm connected to a massive ultra wide monitor, but there is literally no way around battery when it comes to gaming laptops. Like they all suck. It's actually insane. Like if you guys see that, it's probably gonna drop anytime soon to 87. There you go. That's exactly what I meant. I think the crazier the build, the less the hours. This honestly gets like three to five hours depending on what you do. But hey, at least the size of the brick is small because God knows you gotta keep these plugged in to get the best performance out there. Delivers all this performance, whether plugged in or on battery. Shots fired, but hey, you really can't game on a Mac. This is very much my guide for budget gaming laptops overall. If I had to give you guys in order the things to look out for, it would be GPU, RAM, CPU, screen quality, storage, and maybe battery capacity along with total graphics power, just because TGP doesn't necessarily always tell the full story. I do think the Cyborg 15 in particular is a tiny bit too overpriced. I think at $800 to $900 more or less, it would be a steal. Not because of the internals actually, but more because of the display. So these are overall things to consider when purchasing your next laptop as a whole. Just make sure you don't get fooled by spec sheets because as you can see internally, this is a solid laptop even though it has budget components. I very much think the gaming benchmarks showed that, especially on the GPU side. On my end, I'm sure I missed some other tips which is why it would mean a lot to all of us if you share your thoughts. My goal is to create a proper guide with good conversations down below to help you all buy on sale or buy from a good manufacturer like MSI or heck just buy used just make sure you do some proper research so you can get the best bang for your buck. If you are interested in the Cyborg 15 I'll leave some links down below since MSI was nice enough to lend me this laptop to make a guide. I really hope this video helps you guys wanted more budget so here it is. I will see you all soon. Take care.